Today I want to talk to you guys about what I think is the most important question if you are thinking about hitting the road as a full-time nomad. That question is, are you going to be happier on the road? It's Robin with Creativity RV, and welcome to episode eight of Be a Nomad, Change Your Life, my Sunday series where I give you everything you need to become a full-time nomad in one playlist. Now, in the past Sunday videos, I've done things like budget and what type of a rig is right and how to find some free camping, and I'm going to get back to some of that nuts and bolts stuff in some future episodes. But today, I'm going to talk to you about what I said earlier was the number one question for nomads, which is, are you actually going to be happy on the road or are you going to be happier than you are in your current life? Becoming a nomad is a huge transition for a lot of people. I know for myself, you know, I left a good career. I left a house. I left people that were still back in my old neighborhood that I loved to hit the road and live this adventure full time. And like for you guys, for me, it was a huge wrenching decision to make. And you must ask yourself, like I did, is it the right decision? Is it going to make me happy? And at the end of the day, that is really the only thing that matters, right? So like always, I'm going to give you my experience, but I've also done some research on this topic, and I'm going to give that to you as well. And I'm not going to blow smoke at you guys because I don't do that. I'm going to tell you the real deal. And to do that, I've put a little something together to make it kind of fun while I explain to you what you can expect your first year on the road. So let's meet this dude. His name is Bob or whatever you want to call him. And Bob is an average guy. He's pretty happy, normally. And he has a regular job and he goes to that job every day, makes some money, comes back to pay for his house. And after a few years, he's looking at the clock and he's going, oh God, it's only 8.05. I wish it was five o'clock at night. And every year he says he's going to do something different, but that just never happens. But one day, Bob sees a guy in a van and boy, that guy looks happy. And then Bob thought to himself, why couldn't I do that? Why couldn't I live in a van or an RV or be a tent camper or class A or whatever full time? And the more he thought about it, the more excited he got. But then Bob had to pause for a minute because that was a big change to leave his job and his house and everything else to hit the road. And he had to wonder, is it going to make me happier? So Bob's mind started to twirl around with all of the stuff that would have to change if he hit the road and all the stuff he'd be giving up. And then he started to think about all the things he'd be gaining. And after a while, Bob decided, yes, being a nomad is definitely for me. So he sold that house. He picked out a rig that was right for him. He tried to explain to all of his friends and family what this meant for his life and where he'd be going every day. And yes, that included his mom. And he grabbed his trusty dog and together they hit the road and there was nothing but sunshine in front of them and they lived happily ever after. But wait, you're thinking that's just the beginning. What happened to Bob's happiness? Well, let's take a look at this graph that I made. And after this, I'm going to show you some of the actual science that goes behind this graph. But Let's look at Bob the day before he hit the road. He's a pretty happy guy, right? Then he hits the road and about two weeks in, he's going, yeah, this is awesome. I'm getting to meet new people and I'm seeing new places and I'm living my dream. And his happiness increased. And that happiness continued to increase until about his third month on the road. But then Bob noticed something strange started to happen. His happiness level started to drop. And it dropped way below where it was when he lived in his old house in his normal old life. About six months is where Bob's happiness kind of tanked. And he's thinking to himself, did I make a terrible decision? Is this the wrong thing for me? But Bob stuck with it. And here's what happened. His happiness level increased. And at about the end of a year, his happiness was about the same as what it was before he hit the road. 
What I just showed you guys is something called an expatriate scale. Now let me give you a little background. About 15 years ago, I lived in Costa Rica for a year. I taught at a university as a professor. And of course, I was super psyched to go and super psyched to be there. But about six months in, I started to get a little bit down. And I was talking to one of my coworkers about it, and she told me about this thing called the expatriate scale, which is a sociological study of happiness and how it relates to people that go into radically different circumstances. So what happened to me there and what's happened to me in my RV life are exactly what I just showed you that happened to Bob. So if you're a normal, happy person or whatever your level of happiness is, sure, when you hit the road, your happiness level is going to go up because everything's new and exciting and you're doing the thing you said you were going to do, which raises all of your endorphins and it makes you happy. But then you start to get used to it and then you hit this decline and here's why. Your new life ends up being a little bit harder than you thought it was going to be and you start to hit some obstacles. When I was in Costa Rica, that was because I couldn't just go in and buy produce the way that I used to and I couldn't figure out how to pay my electric bill and you know I was learning the language so everything around me was hard and the same thing happened in my RV. After I hit that three month period and then I started to take a dive it was things like every time I opened a cabinet something fell out on my toe like a flashlight or my camping spot didn't work out or I had problems with the mechanics of the inside of my RV, like I told you guys. And I remembered this expatriate scale, and I knew that it was gonna get better as soon as I acclimated. So here's what I want you guys to know. An RV life is just life, and it's gonna have stressors just like you had stress in your old life, but those stressors are gonna be different. And here's what I found. Every problem has a solution, which maybe your old life didn't. And you are the master of your destiny. You can go anywhere. You can stay as long as you want. And unlike in your old life, you have control over your circumstances. So if you don't like your neighbors, you get up and leave. And if you don't like the weather, you get up and leave. And if you really like a place, you stay and relax and enjoy that place. So here's what I want you guys to know. When you hit the road, and for those of you that are already on the road, please comment below and tell me what your experience has been. But when you hit the road, there are going to be ups and downs emotionally. So living as a nomad is not going to necessarily make you happier. It's not like somebody's going to sprinkle magic little fairy dust on you and you're going to be instantly happier. It's not a panacea to fix everything in your life. But I will tell you this. Your life is not going to be like what it was before. And if the nomad life is for you, then you're going to find adventures and satisfaction that you did not have before. So is satisfaction the same as happiness? To me, it can be. And here's the other thing I want you guys to know about what's really cool about being a nomad as it relates to happiness. Remember that little graph where he was steady and then his happiness went up and then it kind of went down and then it evened out? I actually find that happens to me on a smaller scale every time I go to a new spot. So I plan, I plan, I plan, and then once I hit the road, like, I feel happier. My endorphins go up. I love seeing new places and new towns and I get really excited. And then I get to my spot and, you know, maybe that afternoon I'm sick of setting up and I can't get level or, you know, whatever. And then it evens out. But the fun part is to know that I can control this level of happiness in my travels and I do. So what can you expect? Well, of course, everybody's different. And please share your stories down below. But based on a lot of research that's been done for not only expatriates but also foreign workforces and refugees this is about what you can expect on an emotional level and think about this have you ever moved to a new country or a new town or a new job even and you experienced something just like this i felt this way just you know buying a new car or something you know you get really excited and then it's not maybe everything you expected and then everything ends up fine so go into your nomadic life with your eyes wide open it is an amazing rich fulfilling life with a little bit of ups and downs along the way and that's the truth 
So I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you do, please like, share, and subscribe, and check out my blog at Creativity RV in the coming weeks, because I'm going to be doing a blog post on this very subject. Everybody have happy travels out there, and be free.